The first part is lowest dosage. I have taught you that there is a minimal necessary dosage of estrogen that is required in order to prevent a heart attack. And if you take less than that minimal dosage, you will not prevent a heart attack. You may alleviate your hot flashes and maybe some other symptoms of menopause, but lipids will continue building up in your heart arteries. And over time, they will still get clogged enough to put you at high risk of a heart attack. Now, you know, it's interesting. Whenever I say something like that, someone always asks me, well, will the lower dosage help prevent a heart attack at least a little bit? And I always think that's like being a little bit pregnant. Do you really want to gamble with something as serious as a heart attack by using a dosage that's lower than the proven minimally necessary dosage for preventing a heart attack? When you make your own rules or negotiate with the facts or hope to get the same results without the necessary dosage, you are just kidding yourself. So this part of that mantra does not serve you well at all. If your doctor follows this mantra, it is highly likely that the dosage he or she gives you will be inadequate for preventing a heart attack. I see this all the time with the women with whom I do consultations. They are taking these minuscule little teeny tidbits of HRT. They usually still have a lot of symptoms and their doctor won't give them a higher dosage and they are at risk for heart attack. And until they meet with me, they may not even know that. So be careful. Lowest dosage does not serve your needs well at all. The second part of that mantra is shortest time. What in the world does that mean? Does it mean you should take HRT for one year, two, three, five, ten? I mean, how much more vague can it get? Whose definition of shortest time rules here? Yours or your doctor's? How do you determine when your shortest time is up? Do you stop HRT to see if your symptoms come back? If your symptoms do come back, do you restart HRT? Do you stay off HRT long enough to build up enough lipid in your arteries to have a heart attack? Do you see how arbitrary this is? Does it make any sense to you? This is why I like to dissect things. I like to make you think. I don't want you just hearing something and going, okay, I'll follow that. I want you to, I want you to use skepticism and logic to make sure everything makes perfect sense to you. When something doesn't make sense, I want you to be aware of it. The next issue is the five to 10 years of the estrogen window of opportunity. Yeah, I've explained to this, explained this to you in great detail in a number of podcasts and in my videos too. In, in everything I've taught, you've learned that the five to 10 years designated by the estrogen window of opportunity is the time during which you can still start taking HRT after you become postmenopausal. The problem is that so many professionals misinterpret it as a time limit for taking HRT. They, they, they interpret it as a duration. So they give it patients HRT for a total of five to 10 years and then they stop it. Or they have this idea that they can only yeah, have it for five years or only 10 years. They arbitrarily misinterpret what five to 10 years is all about. It's all about the time during which your risks are lower than your benefits for starting HRT. You haven't built up enough lipids in your arteries to make the risk greater than the benefit or to increase your risk for heart attack. The five to 10 years is the time during which if you start HRT, you can help prevent a heart attack. <clears throat> so if your doctor misinterprets this five to 10 years and says to you, oh, well, you can only take 
HRT for five to 10 years. What do you think happens to your heart arteries when you stop HRT after the five to 10 years? Once again, you will have deferred the aging process for those five to 10 years. And when you stop HRT, the aging process will proceed. So you will have postponed a heart attack for five to 10 years, but you will not continue postponing it beyond that time. Do you see how none of these mantras make any sense in the context of preventing heart attacks? And yet, because preventing heart attacks is not the primary reason anymore for using HRT, it's difficult for you to argue your case for continuing HRT if your primary reason for wanting it is to prevent a heart attack. And, you know, most women, when they learn about all this stuff, they say, gosh, the primary and secondary reasons are upside down. And most of them want HRT for these disease reasons, not for the symptoms. They want them for both, but their primary reason is to prevent a heart attack. You see, I deal with these issues daily in my one-on-one -on -one consultations. And unfortunately, most women consult with me after they've already dealt with these things and become frustrated and burned a bridge with their doctor. They'd be much better off if they had consulted with me beforehand, and you will be too. I'm pretty relentless, so I still find ways to help them, and I'll find a way to help you. But you don't need all that drama or stress. So here's the summary. HRT prevents heart attacks if you start taking it early in your postmenopause, and it continues to prevent heart attacks as long as you continue taking it. When you stop it, if you stop it, it stops preventing buildup of lipids in your arteries and the aging process ensues. In the very first year off HRT, your heart attack risk increases by two to three times. And eventually you are at high risk for heart attack all over again. Now I'm presenting this in isolation, ignoring all the other things you can do to prevent a heart attack. But that enables you to see this relationship between estrogen and heart attacks more clearly. It's the estrogen that prevents heart attacks. Progesterone is not the important hormone. Progesterone has no, no role whatsoever in preventing a heart attack. You only need progesterone if you have your uterus. It is to protect your uterus, not your heart. So you can see how as you learn every little piece of information that it all adds up to logic. Logic makes you very secure in making your decisions. You know, there's nothing better than peace of mind. And so this education is my attempt to give you peace of mind and confidence so that whatever you choose to do, you know what you're doing. I hate it when women are insecure and they're wondering, they're not sure they're taking something, but it scares them. And they, you know, they're kind of, they've got one foot in the confidence lane and one foot in the fear lane, and they're not really sure what they're doing. I don't want that for you. I want you to understand exactly what's going on. I want you to tailor everything to yourself. I want you to be absolutely certain of what you choose to do. And I will help you manage your menopause any way you want. Um, if you go to my website, which is menopausetaylor.me, you can schedule a consultation with me. I do them with women all over the world, all of them by video conferencing, and I will tailor all the information to you and help you know your best options and make sure that you have peace of mind. So I thank you for tuning into this podcast today. Come back next week and I will talk to you again then. Bye. <laughs>